Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. In this little series that I'm putting together, we're picking up from the previous series where I went from the ISS out to the moon and landed at Brighton Beach. When I got there, I hit a quick save in Orbiter and we picked up from that point. We, in the last video, we lifted up off the landing pad at Brighton Beach, got into orbit, and our plan is to rendezvous with the Luna Wheel. That's that space station that spins around and we're going to try to dock with it. This particular uh, mini mission brings with it some new challenges that I didn't have to experience in the first couple of uh, new video series that I put together. So I thought that would be a good way to give me some additional practice with doing some things that I haven't had to do in a long time. So with that said, let's go ahead and switch camera views back to the full screen and jump right back into it. So I'm going to unpause the simulation and we are pretty much on track now for our rendezvous. We have our relative inclination brought down. It was, it was zero, but uh, it uh, has shifted ever so slightly, but that difference of 0.01 isn't really enough for us to worry about. And we brought our DT min down to a very low number. And each time we go around, which I think is only gonna be one more orbit, we will uh, check the DT min again and make any corrections that we need to make at that time. So with that said, let's look at a line plane, and it uh, looks like we are coming up to a node here in a moment. So let's go ahead and warp time forward to get over to that point. And since with our ship already level with the horizon, we can just use some translation thrusters to take care of that last little bit of relative inclination difference. And again, it really doesn't even matter. AN equals AN, so ascending node equals anti-normal which means we wouldn't be needing to thrust down. And since this is such a small amount, I'm not going to bother to rotate the vessel. It would cost more uh, rotational uh, fuel than it would to actually just do the translation down just from wings level. So we're going to go all the way down to just like one second. And then we're going to press eight to fire thrusters out the top, which will push our vessel down. And that's it. So we have a zero relative inclination and a zero estimated thrust. So let's go ahead and orbit around until we're back to our apoapsis. And then we'll uh, make any adjustments to the DT min that we need to make at that time. So let's go ahead and warp time forward. And we're getting pretty close to that point, so we'll go back to 100. And now down to 10. And we're pretty close to prograde, so we don't need a whole bunch of time, but we'll come out at 45 seconds, hit the prograde button, get our vessel into position, and continue to warp time forward until we are at really close to uh, zero there. Make sure we're in linear translation and we are. I think I need to bump the translation forward. It doesn't look like it. I guess somehow I always manage to get that wrong. It's like plugging in a USB stick. It's always upside down the first time. And looks like that's about as good as we're going to get this time. So let's turn off the prograde autopilot. And since we'll be coming up to uh, rendezvous pretty soon, we need to think about our, our navigation equipment. So let's bring up the comm nav and press control I to bring up the object info. And we'll change to vessel and then pick the Luna wheel. And with nav one selected, we'll put the long range transponder on nav one. looks like that's 132.7. So I'm going backwards to uh, 132.7 and then we'll switch to nav 2 and we'll put port 1 on nav 2 which is just 136 even. So we'll go oh, wrong way. 136 
And if we wanted to, we could put uh, port 2 on nav 3, but uh, we won't bother. We'll just plan on going to port 1, even if it's inconvenient. We'll go around the Luna wheel and go to, go to uh, port 1. So let's select the docking MFD, and let's copy that information over to the HUD by pressing the HUD button with nav 1 selected. And let's go ahead and warp time forward. And um, let me go ahead and bring back up sync orbit on this side. I don't think we have another chance to pass apoapsis. I can't remember, but uh, if we do, we'll check out our DT min there again. Okay, yeah, so it looks like we will pass apoapsis again, so we'll clean up our DT min one more time when we get to that point. Okay, so we're at 100, we're just a little bit away, come, down, come back to real time, go to prograde, and okay, we're at 8 seconds, so we'll start bumping the forward-backward translation, and it's going to be backwards a little bit. That brings our DT min, you know, as close to zero as I'm able to get it. Turn off the prograde autopilot, and on our next trip around, we should be able to rendezvous. So let's go ahead and warp time forward to get to that point. Okay, and we can see the space station 60 kilometers out. We have about 2,000 seconds to go. I start not paying attention to that once uh, the space station gets really close, but for now it's kind of good to keep an eye on both. Okay, so we're only 800 seconds out, so I'm not really going to pay attention to that anymore, but I will press F8 to get over to this view so that I can just see more of outer space. And I'm going to go to rotation, and now I want to rotate around so I can actually see my target. And come back to real time. Let me just put in a bit more rotation. Okay, and we can see the wheel out there. Not sure how well it shows up in the video playback, but I can see it pretty well. And there we are. So we have our crosshair right on the velocity vector. And I can see here a uh, nose cone. So that just reminds me. Let's go ahead and open the nose cone now so we don't forget to do that later. And we don't need this anymore. We're close enough and we have all the information that we need. Honestly, we don't need either one of these MFDs, but let me bring up uh, the docking MFD on this side. And I can switch now to nav two because we're close enough that we can have that information and we can press HUD to put that up on the HUD. And we can see that our docking corridor is going to be up here so we can start you know, kind of thinking about moving our velocity vector up that way so that um, so that we're headed in that direction. And we don't have a huge amount of uh, relative velocity difference here to, to take care of, but I just want to double check that I have the retro doors open. And I do, okay. So let's go ahead and warp time forward to get a bit closer. This is a very small amount of velocity difference, so we don't need a whole bunch of distance or time to get rid of that velocity. So I'm just going to let time pass at 10x and just let us move closer to the, to the Luna wheel. And we'll say 2 kilometers. That's when we'll start um, eliminating this difference in velocity. So distance is currently 5. And we're getting those call-outs so we know. 4, Coming up on 2,000. Alright, we'll start rotating the vessel now. So I'm going to put the nose right on the center of the velocity vector. And 
There's our 2,000 call out. So I'm going to start putting in some reverse thrust to get rid of that relative velocity. And as you can see also, as I do that, I'm basically circularizing, well, I am circularizing my orbit. Translation. Okay, uh, let's, I don't want to have that up there to confuse anybody. Um, so now, uh, again, wherever the velocity vector is pointed, that's where we're going. And let's, let's shoot for like around this area here so that we have enough time to get up there, rotate our vessel, and start heading down the corridor. And we're still moving in that direction at 3.8 meters per second. I think that's a pretty good rate. So I'm not going to make any changes at this time. I'm just going to let time pass by warping time forward at 10. Probably even do 100 just for a moment. Just for a moment, though, back to 10. And we're getting close to the corridor. That's good enough. Let's go back to real time. All right, let's uh, bump our translation a little bit and maybe take out some of this, uh, just a little bit of this, velocity that has us moving in this direction by pressing 9 on the numeric keypad just to kind of slow things down a little bit but I still want to kind of keep that velocity vector more or less at that spot that it's at at the moment okay so let's So we're at about a half meter. So now I'm going to rotate down so I can see my target. So I'm going to pitch the vessel over and do just a bit of time warp. And I'm going to let it continue pitching because I want to get to that point where I can see the X. There it is. And we'll pitch a bit more. And just by pure luck, the X happened to be already lined up laterally. So now I think what we want to do is uh, try to bring the crosshair into, into the center. I'm not going to worry about the rotational frequency just yet, but let's switch over to translation. translation. And we're already translating in the correct direction, so we don't need to do too much here. But if we want, we can you know, bump the translation thrusters a little bit and maybe speed it up. And I can also start thinking about translating forward so I can press six, just so I can start moving just ever so slightly towards the Luna wheel, but I don't want to move too fast yet because I still have these other, these other movements that have to be sorted out. Okay. Now, I'm getting pretty close, so I'm going to translate uh, down to slow down my movement in that direction and a bit over. And now I'm going to switch to control thrusters because that crosshair is getting really close to the line. So now I'm going to uh, take out some of those different movements. Okay, there we go. So so the X is where we want it, and the crosshair is where we want it. So now we need to switch our thinking to our rotational frequency. Before I do that, I just want to spend a moment here moving forwards, and you can see that after a little bit of time passes, you know, the crosshair is slipping. So I want to try to spend a moment or two here and get that crosshair hopefully lined up without without having it slip off too much bef before I start switching to the uh, the rotational frequency because once I do that I it, the vessel is you know spinning so thrusting with linear becomes much more challenging So I'm just trying to baby the thrusters here a little bit with control thrusters because I want to get that crosshair as uh, lined up as I can. And, I, and I'd like to see it hold there for a moment. And actually one thing I need to do, my forward velocity is not enough, so I need to move it. Let's go forward 
we're, we're a ways out. So at this point, let's go uh, one meter. Actually, let's go two meters. Let's go 1.5 meters for now, about 1.5 meters. And now I'm going to try to get that crosshair on the middle. And now I'm just going to kind of take my hands off for a moment, and I just want to see, is it going to, is it going to hold, or are we still drifting a little bit? Now, really, again, I think I said this at the outset of the video, I'm pretty sure you can dock without ever worrying about matching the rotational frequency. It's just a bit, um, a bit of a cheat to do it that way, but that would be fine, you know, for an absolute beginner. But I think I'm going to try to match that frequency and you can see as I'm moving forward, you know, my crosshair is slipping a little bit. So I'm going to use just a little bit of control thrust to try to bring that back in. And I'm going to hold that. And then let's pick a number like 100 meters. That's when we'll start trying to match rotational frequency. If we, if we try to match the rotational frequency when we're, you know, way, way out, 500 meters or something, there's going to be so much happening that by the time we get close and we're getting near the time ready to dock, you know, everything's going to be drifting. For now, we can just use the fact that we don't have so many movements going on to keep that crosshair in the center. Okay, so we're about ready to break the 100. So now 100 rotation. I'm going to switch to rotation. And when the triangle gets uh, close to the top, I'm going to start. I'm actually going to take out a bit of my speed for now. Just to slow things down a little bit. Let's go down to a half meter per second. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. And Translation. actually, let me try to get the crosshair lined up. Okay, now that the crosshair is lined up, rotation. I'm going to switch to rotation, and I'm going to start rotating. And you'll notice as soon as I do that, the crosshair starts going wonky. But we will worry about the crosshair after I get the triangle lined up. Okay. And you have to be really careful here not to hit kill rotate. It's a habit that's... So now I'm just going to look at this part here. 50. And and I'm looking at the crosshair, how it's kind of... You know, what, what how is it moving around relative to this box? I don't even hardly really want to look at this anymore because it's just more confusing. But I can see the crosshair. It's kind of moving like this. So I'm thinking with a little bit of, uh, that was a mistake. I goofed that up a little bit because I had, let me do this. Translation. Let's abort and back up because I accidentally uh, hit rotate movement when I meant to do uh, translation. So let's call that a practice, uh, a practice touchdown type of thing and we're just going to back up and, and regroup and do it again because I was intended to do a linear movement but I accidentally did uh, rotation and it's kind of messed everything up so so I'm going to kind of get my movement uh, let's go with that for now we're still backing up and now I'm going to actually kill rotate which messes things up, but it's easier to get everything centered without the rotation. So now I'm going to recenter my X. And that looks pretty good. Translation. Now I'm going to get the crosshair recentered. I was probably too close for an abort there, but um, but we went for the abort anyway, just because I don't want to run the risk of 
of, of messing it all up just because I because I was in the wrong mode for a moment there. All right, so we're just uh, getting the crosshair lined back up. And now I'll start switching my travel back forward again by just a little bit. Okay, crosshair is mostly where we want it. Seventy-five. This um, docking is quite a bit harder than the one at the ISS because we have this extra stuff happening. Okay, crosshairs lined up. Rotation. Let's try to match the rotational frequency. And you can see when we do that, it throws our crosshair off, but we'll deal with that in a minute. And now at this point, it's really important for me to pay attention to which mode I'm in. Okay, so we almost have the triangle straight up. So now I'm going to switch to translation. translation. And what I was saying is I'm watching this crosshair, how it's moving around inside the box. And I want to try to make it so that so that whatever it's so, so that it's mostly just going straight. So at the moment I'm thinking a bit of up translation. Rotation. I need to switch back to rotation for a second to re-rotate the vessel. I'm using control thrust. 50. Now I'm going to switch back to translation for a moment. And that is holding pretty well, but I'm going to rotate, I'm going to translate just a touch down. Touch to the left. Rotation. Switch back to rotation for a second. Because I need to keep that triangle straight up. 40. Translation. Okay, I'm going to translate just a touch down because I can see the way that box, the way that crosshair is moving relative to the box. Touch down again. Touch down again. I'm going to say maybe a touch, a couple touches down. I want to say a bit to the left. And I'm not actually paying attention to this so much anymore because I feel like that is just more confusing. But now you can kind of see how that crosshair is it's not really moving very much relative to that box. So that tells me that I'm moving fairly well straight in. And my my uh, rotation is mostly correct. The, the, the arrow is still white, which is good. It is drifting a little bit. Rotation. So I'm going to switch to rotation and just put in a touch 15. of control 6 to start having it rotate a little bit more back to the way it was. Translation. Bit back to translation. Although I feel like I don't really need to mess with the translation. Ten. But maybe just a pitch to the right. Nine. Eight. Seven, maybe just one six, down, maybe two down, and four, one or two to the two to the three, left. Two. Although one, I, contact. Uh, I had to do a couple of touches up there Ship at the last stopped. moment because I did notice that my uh, my ring was getting red. And so I, I felt like my trans. I felt like I was doing as I was coming in. I felt like I was starting to do a bit of this, just sinking a little bit. So I had to quickly do a couple of control thrusts up. But uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, that's docking at the Luna wheel, which is tricky in my opinion. Um, this is I think one of the I think this is a I think there's a checklist for this or maybe it's one of the challenges. Where you can where you can do docking at the Luna Wheel, and and compared to the ISS, um, I do think it's it's a substantial step up in difficulty, in my opinion. Um, well, nothing to look at because all we have is this yellow thing here. So we'll go to the external view. But uh, yeah, there we are. We're docked at the wheel at the moon. So let's go ahead and switch cameras.
camera views over the overlay. And that's going to be it for this mission. I just wanted to do a bit more with that save file that I had after we went out to the moon and landed at Brighton Beach. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick save uh, while we're here. So let me just do that while I'm thinking about it. Control S. And maybe we'll pick up from, from this save file and then go and do something else. I'm not sure quite what that would be, uh, but I did have this idea in mind because, again, orbiting up off the moon and getting into uh, the orbital plane with the with the space station does present challenges that are different from what you have on Earth, especially docking with the lunar wheel. All that said, that's going to be the end of this little series. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, and I will see you in the next video, if there is one.